A name range is a label that you can assign to one or more cells and can be referred to in formulas. Now when you select a cell anywhere in the worksheet, it's got its default name. It's referencing column G, row 12, so the default name is G12. Now in addition to the default name, you can assign it your own name. Now why would you want to do that? Well, see if this example makes sense. Let's pretend that my mini database here, Ghost Hunting, the number of paranormal activities caught on film, is on row 20,000, column HH. And all the way around it, I've got these other mini databases on ghost hunting and different data that I want to keep track of. I could come up here to the editing group and click Find and see if I can go ahead and get the title right and make sure it's the right database. But instead of second guessing, once I create it, how about if I just go ahead and select the cell, the title, for this range here and give it a name that I'll recognize that I can jump right to it when I want. Let's keep it simple. Let's just do ghost hunting and to go ahead and give that cell a name in addition to it, one that I recognize. So I'm not thinking, let's see, ghost hunting is on, is that H25 or row 20,000? After you have the cell selected, come up here in the name box and you can see the default name for the cell is A1. Just click in it so it highlights it and then just type over it. Ghost, space, hunt. Well, you ought to know that when you add a space, the name box doesn't like it. So when you hit enter, it gives you the raspberries, and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and click inside the name box again, and ghost. And if you want to give it the illusion of having a space, then go ahead and add the underscore, and then just keep on typing, and then hit enter when you're done. And then when you're perusing the worksheet, you're like, hmm, I like to go to that ghost hunting section. Just come up here, click on the drop-down arrow, and there it is. Hey, click on it, takes you right to it. Now, remember that the default name is A1, so that works as well. Go ahead and click off, come up here in the name box, type in A1, hit enter, takes you right to the same cell. And as you recall in an earlier training video, let me click off. If you hit the F5 key on the keyboard, it brings up the go to window. Now, in addition to the previous cells that I've been to that it keeps track of, it also has the named ranges, or in this case, the named cell. Ghost hunting, select it, click okie dokie, takes you right to it. Now, in addition to naming cells, you can also name ranges. In other words, the range of cells that you select. Let me go ahead and click and drag and select that range. Now I'm going to have an ADD moment and go off track just a little bit. When you select a range of cells, you notice how the first cell that you select looks empty and the rest are shaded. Well, that's the initiator of that range. So when it comes to entering in data, when you start typing, that first empty cell is where it's going to begin. So if you hit the tab key, that empty cell now goes down to the next one so you can begin your data entry there, tab, tab, or shift tab to go back up. So if I type in 6, hit tab, it goes down to the next one, type in a number tab, and it just toggles through that selected range. So that way it doesn't get off track, and when I hit the tab key, go over here into another column. Let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times. Now having said that, here's a shortcut that I think you may find helpful. With the selection there, if you hold down the control key and hit the period, it will alternate between the beginning of the column selection and the end. And typically it's used to verify long selections that you can't see on the screen. So to make my point, let's do a long selection. Now the empty cell is up at the top, right, of the selected range. So if I do control period, it takes me down to the bottom here. So that's now open. Control period takes me to the top. Control period takes me to the bottom. So if I'm like, okay, did I make the right selection? Just go ahead and do control period to alternate between the beginning and the end of your selection. Let me go ahead and scroll back up. Okay, off of the ADD moment, let's go ahead and select our range again. And let's give that a name and call it quarter one. So come up here with it selected. So it's not just the first cell, it's that entire range. So if I come up here and type in quarter one, no spaces, hit enter. That, when I select a cell within quarter one, notice in the name box, it has its default name. But when I click and drag and select the entire range, Instead of the default, which is the beginning of the range, B5, it has quarter one. So when I click off, click on the drop down arrow, quarter one takes me right to it. Now there are other ways you can go ahead and create named ranges besides just coming up here after you made your selection and typing in the name box. Ways that can be more efficient depending upon your database and how you have it built and if you have a lot to uh, give additional names to. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and select that range and let's give this one the name quarter two. And instead of doing it well, the way I just showed you, let's come up here and click on the Formulas tab and go to the Defined Names group. And let's go ahead and click on Define Name. Opens up a window and it says, hey, of the selection here, Excel has some logic because, well, you built the database in an organized manner that Excel can go, okay, I've got a bunch of numbers, and above that, I've got some text. So I bet that that's going to be the name for this column. You don't have to have that name. You can type over it. 
but hey, if it works, leave it, right? Okay. Click on the scope drop down arrow, and as far as this name goes, you can have it only available in sheet one or sheet two or the entire workbook. If it's in sheet two, then if you try to reference it in sheet one, well, you won't see it. So let's go ahead and do the entire workbook, and then you can make any comments and say, hey, do needs to be discussed. Hey, quarter two needs to be discussed because it was one of the top quarters for the number of paranormal activities caught on film. And then if you made a mistake and it wasn't really referring to C5 through C8, you can click on the collapsible dialog box button. You get the marching ants. Go ahead and select a new range, which er, I don't want to do. Let's go ahead and select that range. Open it back up. Click okie dokie. And there you go. So there's quarter two. Another way you can do it is you can go ahead and select the label in addition to the data down below. Now you only want to do it this way if you come up here and use the create from selection. That's where it requires when it comes to naming a range that you select the label with the adjacent data. Let me show you when you click on it, it opens up a window and it says okay of the selection here the first cell in that selection is it in the top row, the left column, bottom row, or right column because that's going to be the name for the values in that selection. And you can see right here it's in the top row, so when I click okie dokie, watch what happens when I click off and I click on the drop down arrow to go to quarter three. It doesn't include the name because it knows that that's the name for this range. So it kind of speeds things up a bit where we don't have to type in the name here. If we include the name, if that's the name that we want for this range, that's just right above it. I mean, it makes sense because that's the name for this column here to go ahead and select it and then click on create from selection. Now you can do it not only by column, but also by row, and not just one row, but, well, let's go ahead and select all these rows here. Now where are the names for these values here? They're on the left-hand side. So after I select my range, come up here and click on Create from Selection. And because Excel can see the logic here, in other words, my database isn't scattered, I don't have New York here, and then a, a couple of empty columns, then quarter one, then a couple of empty columns, quarter two, and so on, it's all tightly knit together, and it can tell. Here's a range of values, here's some text. I bet that the names for these values are going to be on the left-hand side. And it's not just New York, but it's also going to create a named range for Georgia, which is going to be that range, for Utah, that range. Well, it's in the left column, the names for those ranges. Click okie dokie, and let's see if it did it. Come up here, click on the drop-down arrow. Hey, there's California, and it selects that range, not the name, because that is the name that was given to that range. And you can see up here, California. Georgia, Utah, New York. Now, if you made a mistake with your named range where you want to edit it because you want to rename it or just select a different range or even delete it altogether, then come up here to the Define Names group and click on Name Manager, and there's all the ranges. So, for example, like quarter one, maybe it should be QTR underscore one instead of all spilled out there. So select it, click on Edit, QTR underscore one, and then any comments if you want to add, click okie dokie, and it updates it there. And then, of course, if you want to delete any of these, like maybe quarter three, delete it, okie dokie, it's gone. Any changes you want to make, even, like I said, double click on it. If you want to refer to a different range, click on the collapsible dialog box button and select a new range. Let's click cancel, and let's go ahead and close out. The final thing I want to show you is that you can include your name ranges and formulas. So, for example, you recall that this range is the quarter one, and that one's quarter two, and down below we've got the totals for it. So you can see, up here in the formula bar, it's the sum of B5 through B8. Well, what if I did this? Go ahead and click in the cell here, and I want to use the auto sum. Just come up here, click on auto sum, and instead of selecting a range, I can come over here to the define names group, and click on the drop down arrow and say, okay, in this formula, I want to use quarter one. Hey, isn't that cool? It automatically selected quarter one. If we want to include something else, you can see down below in the syntax, there's number one for the first range. If we want to include a second range, hit the comma, and all of a sudden the syntax opens up for number two. The second range is in bold. It's ready to go ahead and select. You can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and say you want to include quarter two. So when it comes to using that in formulas, after we well, I don't want to include quarter two, so let me hit the backspace arrow several times, hit enter. And do we get 30? Yes, we do. But, well, okay, this one's in accounting here, the dollar sign. 
which would be nice if we were dealing in money every time we got paid to catch somebody on film. Well, our advertisers would pay us. In any case, we can, of course, update that on the Home tab and go from Accounting to General. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can just go ahead and type in equals and then do sum, pop it open, and then go ahead and type in the name of the range if you remember it. If not, you can go ahead and select it, but the name was QT. And when I start typing the first couple letters, there you go, it brings up the named ranges down below, quarter one, quarter two. I can arrow down to quarter two and hit the tab key and it pops open and then hit enter and hey, that works. Or I could have used the mouse and selected the uh, name range there. And when I go back and select the cell, you can see that, well, I don't know what quarter two is. It doesn't tell me the range that it's referencing, the default name. But by logically looking at it, quarter two is this range here. But in any case, you can double click on it and see what's selected there, and that works. And because we still have the default names, you can still go ahead and just type in the default name, which begins with uh, C5, C5, colon, same column, C8, hit enter, and there you go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.